Hey guys, Ben from Back Photography here, and today I'd like to talk to you about how you can book some destination weddings. So a little bit about myself for those who don't know me. My name is Ben, I've been a professional photographer for about five years now, and I've been lucky enough to shoot a whole bunch of very interesting projects all around Asia, parts of Europe, as well as Australia. And the types of photography I normally travel for are weddings, fashion, and photography for music. So I think it's fair to say that it's every photographer's dream to work full-time as a photographer, travel around the world taking beautiful photos. But a lot of photographers struggle with how to get these sorts of bookings and how to get the ball rolling. So today I'm going to give you some practical tips and advice on how you can actually acquire these bookings and start traveling for your photography and getting paid for it as well. So the first thing you need to have, which I think is the most important thing that you'll need to get these sorts of bookings, is you'll need to have amazing quality photos and a big selection of them. You'll need to make yourself a huge portfolio of absolutely breathtaking and fantastic images. And not only will they all need to be breathtaking and fantastic, they'll also have to be diverse and show that you've done a lot of very interesting types of photo shoots in a lot of different areas. And the amount of time it takes you to make a really diverse and amazing portfolio will depend on how prolific you are with your photography. Even if no one is booking you for your services right now, there are plenty of Facebook groups, classifieds online, where you can organize yourself with models, hair and makeup artists, and other people like that, and make yourself your own mock photo shoots of weddings, do your own fashion shoots, and all that sort of thing. So you really don't need to rely on other people booking you if you want to get a really wide range and diverse portfolio. So once you've got yourself a really awesome portfolio that you're super proud of, the next step is a bit of a grind, but it's something you're only going to have to do initially when you've never done any destination photography before. And that is you're going to have to send a lot of emails. And I'm talking a lot. You're going to have to send probably a few thousand emails to vendors around the world in places that you would like to do photography. So where can we find these thousands of vendors that we have to email so that we can find some destination wedding bookings? Well, the first place that I always go is Google. And I go, okay, where would I like to shoot a wedding or some portraits or whatever? Let's choose Paris as an example. Okay, so we go on Google and we look up Paris wedding venues. And up will pop a whole selection of different venues in Paris. Now, the next step would be pick the venues that you'd really like to shoot and do a little bit of research, you know, 30 to 45 seconds of research on them, and then jump into your favorite email client and we'll start writing an email for that venue. It's really important that these emails you're sending out aren't spam. They need to be useful to the person you're sending them to because if they are spam, no one's gonna to reply to you, you're not gonna get any bookings and you're just wasting your time. So first things first, you need to address the person you're sending it to. It's very easy to find out who a venue is run by and this is really gonna make a big difference when you're sending these emails out. It's gonna make your email look much less like spam and much more like something meaningful that a vendor is gonna to want to reply to because that's what these emails are. Second thing you need to do is you need to do a bit of research on the venue, find some points that you like and put them in the email. It will give you a much higher chance of receiving an email and also it makes the recipient of the email know that you actually have done your research and you're not just sending out blindly thousands of emails that are random to a whole bunch of venues and hoping that someone will reply to you. So this is one way that you can secure yourself some destination weddings, but personally I think that this is probably the worst way to do it. First of all, you are sending out a lot of emails, so you're spending a lot of time researching and sending these emails. And that, that sending 5,000 emails could take anywhere between 100 to 200 hours of time. So another way that you can get destination weddings that personally I think is a much better way is you can spend a little bit of money and advertise your product in a high-end wedding magazine. As well as advertising on a high-end magazine, I would also recommend advertising these products on Google using Google AdWords and also on Facebook and Instagram using their native advertising frameworks as well. I think it's worth noting that you will end up spending a few hundred dollars minimum just for one of these bookings. So you need to factor that into your price when you're working out how much you're going to charge for a destination wedding package. From experience, it normally costs me about four to five hundred dollars to finalize a destination booking where I make somewhere in the range of six to seven thousand Australian dollars. 
So that's another way that you can secure yourself some destination wedding bookings. Now it's always a bit of a risk when you're using advertising platforms because you can spend quite a lot of money and sometimes get no bookings, especially if your ads aren't optimized. So the third way, and personally my favorite way, I think of getting destination wedding bookings when you're just starting in the field of destination wedding photography is to actually book some quote holidays over in those areas and see if you can find yourselves some very either low cost or completely free weddings that you can shoot while you're over there. And the reason I think that this is a really great way of getting yourself into the destination wedding scene is you can then have these images in your portfolio of you shooting in different countries and when you advertise these on your website, on your social media, people can see then that you haven't just shot weddings in your area. And I know a lot of people are going to say, Ben, you really shouldn't ever offer your service for free because first of all, you're devaluing yourself and second of all, you're devaluing the whole industry. And yes, I absolutely agree. You should never give away your services for free. And that's why instead of just giving a wedding overseas to any random person. I think it's a really great thing to offer your services to a charity event, maybe to a couple who are terminally ill or a couple that have been met with hardship in their lives. And that way you're doing something benevolent for the community in the area, which gives you a lot of good reputation, but also you're getting all of these fantastic images in a new country for your portfolio to bring back when you're showing off your skills and experiences to prospective clients. And I definitely agree with the idea that giving your services for free devalues you as a professional. And that's why I think choosing a charity event counters that because sure you're giving your service away for free, but if you're giving it to a charity, there's no stigma behind devaluing yourself because you're offering your services as a charitable gesture. So it's not as if you're saying to people around you, well, my wedding services aren't worth anything, so I'm giving them for free. What you're actually doing is you're saying, my services are worth something, but I'm giving it to you for free because it's a charitable thing and I feel like you deserve these services. So thank you very much for watching. If you're still here, please leave a like if you did enjoy this video and feel free to subscribe as well. Next month, I'll be going to Europe to shoot a wedding in England, Scotland, Paris and Barcelona. So there's going to be a lot of cool new content on how I acquired those bookings, what it's like to book weddings over there and also just a bit of travel blogging as well. Once again, thank you very much for watching and I hope to see you in the next one. Bye.